After I took him out to a Father's Day dinner and uh, he unfortunately got food poisoning. So um, he, he, he wasn't able to make it this morning. So I'm here to uh, uh, pretty much recite his speech on his behalf. So uh, once again, apologies for his absence. And uh, I hope that I do his speech justice. Uh, to the students of Polytechnic University of the Philippines in attendance this morning, to the organizers of the symposium, especially the Center of Peace and Poverty Alleviation Studies, and, and the Department of History, to the administrators, teaching staff, and other personnel and employees of the university, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Firstly, the Congress might have to modify and adjust the present version of the BBL in order to align and make it consistent with the Constitution. Soaring of the unconstitutional provisions, the BBL could then already proceed to be a legitimate subject of legislation by Congress. To repeat, Congress cannot pass a law that would go against the Constitution. This is based on the doctrine of constitutional supremacy. If the proponents of the BBL in Congress are really bent on passing the BBL in the exact shape and form as drafted by the palace, then there would be no other legal recourse but to initiate a coordinate move of amending or revising of the Constitution. This is in order to accommodate and make possible all the drastic changes in our existing government structures and institutions called for under the BBL. Thus, under Article 17 of the Constitution, Said proposed constitutional changes shall be done by Congress either through direct action, upon a vote of three-fourths of all of its members, or through a constitutional convention. This particular view is shared by eminent legal minds, most notably by former Supreme Court Chief Justice Artemio Panganiban. These are the peaceful, unifying, and constitutional ways of doing it. In the name of peace, let these be done. No shortcuts, no railroading, no threats of violence, no threats of war. Let us do this right, as one nation united by our constitution and under one flag. What we are doing now is history in the making. And by your active involvement and your insights in the national dialogue, you too can be part of the process in writing this particular chapter in our history. So I urge you to be involved, and I also humbly ask you for your support your patience and your understanding.